Hey, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Hey, today we've been working with refrigerant and refrigerant charging, hooking up our gauges and different things like that. We talked about superheat and subcooling. Now that we've got our superheat and our subcooling number, what does that mean to the system? How do we determine whether or not we need to add refrigerant or remove refrigerant? Whether or not we're overcharged or undercharged? Well, those numbers give us some, uh, give us some insight as to the whether or not we're overcharged or undercharged in our system. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to determine what type of metering device we have. If we have a TXV or whether or not our metering device is a fixed orifice. That's gonna be very important at the number that is most important to us in charging. For example, if we have a fixed orifice device, metering device, we're gonna charge looking at our superheat number. If we happen to have a TXV metering device, then we're gonna, we're gonna charge our system looking at our subcooling number. Now, it doesn't mean that we totally negate the other number. It just means that that's gonna be the primary number that we look at in evaluating the whole system. So for example, um, if we're gonna be charging using the superheat method, um, and, and the subcooling method as well, we need to make sure that we're able to have a digital psychrometer so that we can calculate dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. A lot of times when we're calculating super heat and subcooling, a lot of people leave out the wet bulb and how that affects our system. So be sure to have a digital psychrometer with you so that you can get um, dry bulb, wet bulb uh, calculations and those temperatures to include in your diagnostics. Also, uh, some companies you may work for have a chart similar to this where you have your, uh, your outdoor temperature, your indoor coil wet bulb temperature, and based on those numbers you can plot and figure out exactly what your superheat number should be. Um, should you have a TXV system, we know that a TXV system is going to maintain a constant superheat of 10 to 15 degrees. So that number, if that TXV is working properly, should stay within that range. Now, the amount of humidity or moisture content that we have in the air could affect that a little bit, but for the most part, 10 to 15 is gonna be the number that we're looking for. If we have a THV, then we're gonna charge by the subcooling number. Subcooling is really easy. If the subcooling is too high, then we take refrigerant away. If the subcooling is too low, then we add refrigerant to our system. Well, how do we know? Good question. Well, because we already figured out that we had some charts to kind of tell us what to do based on superheat. But for subcooling, it's a little different. Now, you can, some manufacturers will have a, a chart on the data plate that gives us the information for the desired subcooling for that particular system. Now, here's the data plate for this, this unit. And on it, you can see that it gives us some of the, our subcooling values for charging. Um, and it has this one at uh, 10 plus or minus one. You have to make sure that you have the right, you match the tonnage or the right, uh, the tonnage is for two ton, a three ton, a four ton, and a five ton. And you can see they have different subcooling, required subcooling values. So look on that chart to find that information. Once you find that, then you know what to do with your system. So just real quickly as we close, just a few things to remember uh, when it comes to evaluating the refrigerant charge. One, you gotta have your superheat and subcooling number. Number two, you have to know which type of metering device you have on your system. Number three, make sure you have a digital psychrometer so that you can calculate wet bulb temperatures. Um, number four, refer to any charts or manufacturer specifications on data tags to find the desired subcooling or superheat and subcooling ranges. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Hey, we absolutely love our HVAC community. We want you to continue to tune in. We want you to continue to, to leave us your, your comments. Uh, make sure you click below to subscribe. We definitely want to hear from you and we'll see you next time.